My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. And exhausted, you step away from the frolicking nymph bathhouse and take a moment to ponder your next move. You all have homes you could return to, but two of your number are cursed, and that must be dealt with. Falkron, while Brother Hodges would probably be willing to help with any healing magic, <clears throat> curse removal is beyond his scope. <clears throat> Fortunately, you know that he is very good friends with some of the clerics of Ogma, at the Temple of the Unrolled Scroll. It is in the upper city, but as it is still day, you should have no trouble getting through the gates, and your Flaming Fist insignia will be enough to allow you to stay past dusk, should it come to that. Wearily, you make your way towards the original Baldur's Gate and into the upper city. You arrive at your destination at mid-afternoon. Hello? Brothers? Greeted. Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Anyone? <laughs> That's right. Sorry. I was changing sorry. the music. <laughs> That's all right. Built of white. <laughs> That's a great image. Just, Hello. <laughs> no. Built of white marble with an arched roof of vibrant red edged in gold leaf. The Temple of Agma stands out among the surrounding buildings. A wide reflecting pool rests in a deep basin under its roof, which is built with exceptional acoustics so that a speaker's words project clearly and effortlessly across the assembled audience. This has made the shrine a popular place for weddings, dedication ceremonies, and other oaths. You are greeted by an acolyte soon after you enter and asked to wait by the reflecting pool while he speaks to his superiors about your needs. As you stand around the reflecting pool, Persephone says that there is a legend that holds that bards and artists who study their own reflections in the basin for half a day, opening their minds to Agma's will as they do, behold a vision to inspire their next creation. After a short wait, you are ushered into a comfortable study. It smells sweetly of tobacco, and while there is plenty of medium-sized seating, the desk and bookcases are clearly designed for a person of small stature. Rim, you tower above a stool that looks as if it could maybe support one of your toes. Wisely, you refrain from sitting. Presently, the tapping of a staff can be heard approaching from the hallway. The door opens, revealing an elderly gnome with long hair, mustache and beard, the color and shape of pulled cotton. He's wearing a cloak made of some sort of dark, leathery material, and a squirrel is perched on his shoulder. He leans on his staff and says, The favor of the Lord of Knowledge be upon you all. Corcoran Pebblemoss, at your service. Corcoran Boneforge of the House of Amata. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. I, I, I don't wish to assume that your outright informs you of the needs of my party. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, curses, I heard. Hmm? Yes, yes. Two uh, of them, in fact. I, I am in desperate need of healing, and unfortunately, I am unable to access most of my powers while currently cursed. We had a, a run-in with some cultists. Oh, so you cannot take advantage of magical healing. <laughs> that sounds like the work of Merkel. 
Am I right? You have it in one. <laughs> that old bag of bones. What has he been up to? <laughs> Very well. He steps into the room and comes up and looks at you and pokes at you a little bit. So you and uh, who else? Rim oh, my. slowly raises his hand. Very oh, cool. <laughs> aren't, you a, aren't you a big fellow? <laughs> yes. Hmm. Also cursed by uh, the God of Dead? Rim nods. Hmm. Well, I can certainly be of assistance to you. Uh, for a donation of 300 dragons, I can make short work of Merkel's mischief. He pulls on his beard thoughtfully. But, hmm. He takes a slow look over all of you. Flaming fist, eh? In lieu of gold, perhaps you will consider doing me a favor. Yes? Um, name it, yes. What, what, do you, what do you seek to have done? Hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Um, he closes his eyes for a moment and he taps his staff on the floor. He says, Would you be so kind as to join me in my study? Uh, sight on your way. There's a good lad. And then he opens his eyes and smiles. Yes, uh, we'll, you'll be joining us soon. And uh, I say one favor, but it really is two. Although I think that doing one will facilitate the completion of the other. <laughs> uh, all of you, Flaming Fist, eh? Well, in times of need, our, our city calls upon us to join up. I believe the, the good... Captain? Lieutenant? I'm so sorry, Doran. I keep forgetting just what your rank is. A lieutenant, yes. Yeah, that's... I, I am a member of the Flaming Fist. The others were conscripted. Oh, conscripted? Is there, is there some problem? Well, not so much anymore. <laughs> I, I have noticed that there is uh, you know, a bit of activity. Uh, more activity than usual, but uh, is, there, is there a crisis of some sort? Well... <clears throat> Many of my comrades uh, are otherwise engaged, and we uh, learned of these uh, cultists. Uh, some to uh, several of the, well, the dead three, frankly. And oh. <clears throat> we were conscripted, uh, well, they were conscripted, and I was simply ordered to handle the situation. Mm, so, uh, wait, was that all the only crisis? Just the dead three cultists? It seems like there's more going on. I just, you know, cultists. Well, the, uh, all of the immigrants from, what was that other town? El Terrell. El Terrell. El Terrell. <laughs> there, immigrants from El Terrell? What? What is this? Survivors, knights. Uh, Haven't you heard? To do with it. Haven't you heard, Corcoran? Good Pebble Moss, El Terrell is a crater. A crater, you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I hadn't heard. <laughs> I've uh, been busy with, with some of the outsets. Oh, that's to. Mm. He pulls out a, a pipe. scroll, indeed. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. A, a rolled scroll, but. Uh, mm. He pulls out a pipe and he, he puts it in his mouth. He fills it with tobacco and puts it in his mouth and lights it. Uh, well, <laughs> knowledge is power, of course. Uh, the, the reverse is seldom true. Mm. But uh, I'm afraid that um, <laughs> I've gotten a bit myopic in my old age. I have my own projects. And, uh, at any rate, um, no. which actually br br brings me to this favor. I, I have devoted myself to Ogma for centuries, and I have researched and written several books in his name, uh, the most notable of which is uh, Decrypting the Inferno, a comprehensive study of the innards and reproductive biology of our devilish cousins. Um, and he looks at you all. Well, usually people uh, find that title funny, but uh, it seems you all are uh, a good lot with a good brains on your shoulder. Anyway, a century ago, I, I lent the first draft of this manuscript to a wizard named Ramazif for editing. Shortly after, he locked himself in his tower, which is not far from here, and was never seen again. 
Uh, the tower's lower levels have been reopened and have been home to several individuals and businesses over the decades, but the library is somewhere on the upper levels. Anyone who's gone up there has never returned, but that was where you will need to go to do this favor. Namely, retrieve my manuscript. Hmm. And what might we encounter? Oh, a great uh, font of wisdom that stays in your shrine. What might we expect? I have no idea. I've never been there. As you say, I, I stay here. Oh, in my youth, I was something else. You should have seen me then, but I uh, no. uh, mm, Creature comforts and a uh, comfortable chair and my pipe. That's what have I there been now. no reports back, uh, Corcoran? Have there been no reports back? As, I mean, we could, we could expect to find anything from a swarm of cultists to a, a home of giant raccoons. Uh, I think that um, there is somebody who's living there now. So sort of a, well, he calls himself a mage, but he's more of a squatter. Um, but uh, at least uh, I can't imagine he's been to the upper levels. So I'm sure there's many, uh, many locked doors and many traps, <clears throat> which brings me to uh, favor number two. And at that moment, there's a knock from one of the bookcases. And Corcoran walks over to it and looks back at you and says, Now, uh, everyone, just stay calm, if you please. And he pushes on a book. And a secret door opens, revealing a goblin. Jade, if you would be so kind as to describe your character. Um, he's obviously short. Looks like a normal goblin um where's uh he's got like um a red sort of uh cloak over his head it's like a dark red um uh goes all the way down to the bottom of his feet uh has a short bow on his back um quiver of uh, small arrows short sword and when you look at him you can see he has a twinkle of, of intelligence in his eye his eyes no, 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 don't be shy. Come, come in. <laughs> Introduce yourselves. Oh, is this a lot? That dragonborn's probably going to eat me in the first first time it's uh, meal time. Uh, no, no, he won't do such thing, will you? Grim shakes his head. I don't think you'd be a full meal anyway. Well, I'm, well I suppose so. Yeah, I'm, I am a little bit slim on the bones. He walks in and just eyes you all wearily. Just, hey. I'm just staring with my hand on my sword, like. Go on, go for it. it. I dare you. No, no, no. no, Father? no. In introduce you. yourself. Introduce yourself the way you've been taught. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, my name's Jax. Pleasure to meet you. And he bows awkwardly. Very good. Brother? <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, yeah. that's, Father, that's a actually. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. That's a goblin. Oh, he's a he clever is, one. It is a goblin, yes. Um, Jax here was uh, recovered from the laboratory of a heinous individual who was defeated by myself and my brethren, well, mostly by my brethren, but, but by the clerics of Ogma. This despicable man was experimenting with grafting elements of illithid brain matter and tissue onto other living creatures. All of his other test subjects were abominations, but Jax here is a perfectly normal goblin, except for his intelligence, which has been increased considerably. Don't I worry. Don't you... I come with my own manacles. I don't suppose you kept any notes on those experiments, did you? He looks at you, raises an eyebrow, is like, that, sir, is a very dangerous question. I would think that a Father, a priest, a high priest indeed of Ogma would realize that dangerous questions can produce miraculous results. If one has the audacity to dare to ask them. Research Am I incorrect? Notes. No harm ever came from a question. That is true. Research notes aside, what do you wish us to do with the goblin? Uh, well... Um, 
It pains me to see someone of intelligence and youth and vivor and vivor. Vivor is not a word. Verve. That's the word. <laughs> Verve. Um, being cooped up here with a bunch of old farts like myself. Um, we have studied him. We have observed him. We have talked with him. But uh, Jax, especially now with his increased intelligence, is, uh, is his own creature and deserves to make his own way. Um, I would like to see him experience the world beyond these walls with his new intelligence. And I'm curious as to what impressions it will make. And not get slaughtered. Well, obviously. You said the uh, the tower that you want us to look at had many traps and things? I, I assume. Um, there must be some reason why no one's I'll, come back. I'll, I'll go with the goblin, yeah. <laughs> also, Father, also, Father you, mentioned, you mentioned a squatter inside the temple, but not a name. Um, some fellow from Am. Um, from Am? Al Lor Am, um, yes. Uh, it's a oh. large, large country to the south. Uh, uh, um, hmm. What is it? Starts with an L. Lava. Lava something. Lava, I can't remember. It's, uh, yes, uh, he is there. Um, and as I said, the, the, the bottom levels of the tower uh, have been open for decades, but uh, it's the upper levels that uh, you will have to go poking around in. Lovely. Well, in order to uh, to better help and to train. I don't know, Jax, do you require training? Well, potty training, no. I've been potty trained. Oh, good. That's good. There is the obvious problem uh, with him being a goblin in the town. Um, I'm green. Yes. Uh, I would suggest that in daylight he go hooded. Um try to stay out of sight as best he can. Um, and of course, wear manacles. Um, I think that uh, the manacles are not really there for any sort of um, real deterrent, but it will make people feel better if they realize that he is in fact a goblin, especially mm. manacled and in the company of the Flaming Fist. That should be enough to allow him to move uh, unmolested. They don't want me eating their children again. <laughs> again? That's 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 a vicious rumor. That was a misplay of not... words. He starts counting. I do require a seventh of the treasure. That seems only fair. If you can divide by seven, you can have a seventh of the treasure. Six. <laughs> no, seven, because there is a seventh. So she's not here. That's right. Um, Very astute. So, um, what do you say? Is this uh, situation amenable? Well, uh, of course, we are more than happy to journey forth and take your goblin friend with us. However, the curses will oh, be... Oh, yes, it is, of course, the curses. I think. Right, we'll right. take care of that first. Absolutely. Yes. Good, good. Well then, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, Doran, you're a, you're a, sort of, leader of this madcap crew. Well, we do need to get rid of the curses, and I'd rather not pay that much money. So, sure, why not? Uh, Father, one other thing, while you, um, you have been quite generous, um, but there is a, a bit of a dispute between companions. I hope you could settle, if you would be so amenable. You see, we've found this book. And there is an argument. I think it might be cursed, um, but my friend here with the key thinks absolutely not. It's certainly not cursed. And so I've kept the book from him to prevent it from being opened. Now, could you settle this so we can see what might be within it to try and um, suss out? It must be such a simple one, simple thinking for one of us, such knowledge as you. Uh, um, we simply don't have the time at the moment, and it may help us on the way. Oh, very well. What what circumstances was the book found in? It was found upon 
the body of a follower of Merkel. Ah. You mean this was a spell book of some sort? I, I cannot see inside. That is the whole point. Well, was the follower of Merkel a spellcaster? Uh, this is remarkable. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Well, then it was more likely a spell book. It's not uh, Yes. Not that hard. Um, He's very wise, this one. Yes. It's, he asks uh, all the right questions. If you see here, I, uh, he takes the book and he holds it. and Alfred shoots Silas a little bit of a dirty glance, like, stop making fun of him. Starts sniffing the book. Mm, yes, mm, definitely cursed. Uh, you were wise not to open it. <laughs> As I thought. Um, what, perhaps you could just, if one of us just kept this book on us when you removed a curse, you, you could just r rub a little extra augma into it and just remove the curse from this as well, correct? <clears throat> rub a little extra augma. It's, and that's uh, the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's an interesting turn of phrase. Um... Hmm. Make a persuasion so, check uh, there, Typhon. So we, we have to include suffering, so it could be suffering and a little extra rub of <laughs> Sure. <laughs> suffering, a little extra rub. I of roll a... Oh, no, I had advantage toggled, so... All right, I can roll again. Damn. Was the, first the, the first roll counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the first roll counts. Roll I, I, all right. I, I will accept that. Yes. Hmm. A little extra... An extra rub of Albert. That's <laughs> it's kind of kind of catchy. I like it yeah, very well. You know, alternatively, you could just open it while no one was around it. I'm sure if someone was far enough away, perhaps we could open it with you. Perhaps, Jax. Perhaps you could help us with this. Well, open it a book. That's easy. I can open a book. Oh, we yeah. can even give you a key. Uh, um, Rim hands the key to to Jackson. And I, I, I believe carefully. all of you. I believe all of you are astute enough to realize that I said that the book was cursed and that it was wise not to open it. Are you suggesting that someone who has been put into your care and has done nothing to earn your ire should put himself in harm's way as a no, joke? Not, a, no. not at all, Father. Surely, no, surely, my companions jest. Well, bastards, a lot of them. I told you they were going to kill me. No, 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 they're just... Just need to get used to you. Very well. You were going to remove a curse anyway, right? So... Yes. I would and I shall, but... He looks very seriously at all of you. I have a good feeling about you lot. But I've been oh. wrong before. Yeah, I'm glad you do. So... As I said, he's his own creature, not beholden to anyone but himself. So, treat him fairly. If he misbehaves, and he looks at you, Jax, well, then, <laughs> I expect you'll treat him as you would treat anyone you see misbehaving. But if he behaves himself, I ask that you give him the benefit of the doubt. He is quite different with the added intelligence. And I've come to enjoy his presence. Please take care of him. <clears throat> anyway, let's see. Merkel, yes, his curses usually like to hang around in the left ventricle, but occasionally they creep to the aorta. And he starts poking around and then knocks his staff on the ground and puts out his hand to you, Falkrin, and a uh, beam of blue energy flows down his hand through his fingers and into your chest, and the coldness which has lain there since you touched the statue of Merkel dissipates, and you are able to feel yourself again. And then he comes to you, Rim, and does the same thing. And then over to the book, touches it, and it's his hand. There you are. Still locked, I'm afraid, but uh, I believe that the curse is gone. Thank you, Father. Well, oh, I had a key once. Don't know where that's gone. I extend my hand to Rim. 
very wise of you not to open the book as he hands the key over to him. I, b- I believe I've got the key. Yes, oh, the key was given to Jax. I extend my hand. where that key's gone. <laughs> my hand to Jax. <laughs> what? Uh, you don't have the key? Oh, very well. I'll flick him the key. I'll let you read it if you'd like. And I, I will open the book and... All right, this book uh, contains all the spells that Flintness had, uh, that she had at her disposal. Um, the Master of Souls spell The Master of Souls default spell list. Um, okay, cool. I can read them to you if you wish. I think I... You're probably quick, if probably you be quicker for you yeah, looking yeah. at that. I don't stat mind. Block. No, go right okay. ahead. It'd probably cool. quicker if you just look at them that way. Will do. Uh, Sounds good. Some nice spells for you there, Typhon. Um, but of course, you have to follow all the normal rules for transcribing. Uh huh. Um, right. So, Typhon, Typhon, do do I divine correctly that you intend to learn from this book of evil? I don't think that divine correctly are two words that I ever really put in the same sentence, but um, I do intend to learn from it, yes. I do believe that... uh, Excuse me, Father. Have you Hmm? ever cast a spell that would have been classified in the school of necromancy? Oh, definitely, definitely. As a matter of fact, (laughs) here's one for free. And he casts Cure Wounds, and all of your hit points are restored, uh, Falkron. You see, the Praise be to Agma. The way one uses knowledge is what defines good and evil, or as so as we perceive them. Not okay. necessarily the arts themselves. An interesting topic of conversation, yes. And he leads Perhaps back and starts, for a later time, Father. Uh, I believe you've nature, given us a the task. The nature of evil is... Uh, oh, yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> well... Excellent. Um, uh, you you will, of course, be my guest here tonight. Um, in particular, you, he points at Falkron, and you, points at Rim, will need to rest under observation. Curses are no match for the binder of what is known, but mm, Merkel's curses tend to be deviously persistent. <laughs> so, a little observation overnight, just to be Some sure. Anti- some antibody tests in the morning. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, if you will follow me, I believe we'll have some quarters for you. If that is all right. Perfectly fine. Okay. Thank you, Father. Father. Does anybody not wish to take advantage of Corcoran Pebblemoss's offer of a place to sleep tonight? I think about heading back, but I don't want to report in yet because we haven't actually... Because I want to do this. I want to do this before I report in. So very good. I'm just gonna not go back yet. Would I have any time to browse the stacks, as it were, before bed? Uh, we don't have to role play it, obviously. I'm just, you know. Thinking. Yes, it's uh, uh, it's inside sort of, the temple. Yes, it's sort of <laughs> so, early evening. Yeah. Um, you can browse the stacks. What do you wish to research? Um. So particularly the nature of healing magic, removing curses, restoring life um, through the power of magic and as it relates to the gods, specifically the gods of arcane magic and seeing if there's any sort of connection there. All right, Um, make an investigation check. Oh, wow, okay. Well, you're I'm sorry, I'll toggle that off again but anyway it's all right. sorry. no it, it oh oh it's a single one <laughs> it's yeah. a single well, never mind you, you also <laughs> managed to do it singing a pretty little you whistle a very jaunty song as you uh, go into the stack because i'm reading it as a perform, performance check is that no that was the last yeah. check that was the last i, I accidentally clicked that instead of persuasion so yeah oh i see um same modifier same so. modifier okay so yes um well, with an 11, I'm, well, you're able to find numerous books on the subject of healing and the subject of necromatic magic and the subject of non-magical, uh, such a magical healing. However, none of the information you read is anything that you haven't read before. Um, okay. It seems mostly that the realm of healing through magical means is either something that is uh, gifted 
divinely by those who follow uh, uh, the gods and or um, can be achieved through uh, the study of necromancy. Um, you find a number of books on um, herbs and uh, field uh, first aid and such sort of things that you would uh, find for um, soldiers, that sort of thing, but, but nothing new. Okay. Um, and you are all ushered into a comfortable uh, uh, set of chambers. Um, fairly Spartan. Um, and you do have to double up uh, two to a room. So um, you need to choose who will be the odd man out and then who is staying with who. I'll take a room with Jax. Oh, you All could right. definitely share my room, yes. Persephone looks at you all and says, I think I will take the other room. And goes and finds the room and closes the door. Silas, are you comfortable spending a night in the same room as the night surgeon? Will you check the doorknobs for me, Typhon? I will check them, Silas. I will. Then I would be honored. Perhaps you could explain to me about your fearsome reputation. I've longed for the chance. And if nothing else, to bypass your sewer, rat, backstabbing, etc. comments about me. So. Yes, let us put this to rest. Uh, you, you, you do keep saying how I misunderstand you, but I, I keep hearing this tone in your voice. This something that's sticking out. It's as though you've got a forked tongue. Are you but saying I me. have a sibilant way of speaking? Oh, no, I'm saying you talk like a snake. Straight to the point. What of it? Uh, well, it's just an observation. Keeps most at a distance. Further away. Where I'm more comfortable with them. Until I need to deal with them up close and more personally. It's just I feel that there's no good pretending to be something that you're not. I wear who I am on my sleeve, good or bad. That I can at least respect about Jax as well. He wants to be his own person in a world that very potentially will reject him at every turn. He finds walk, a way. But to walk through the streets in manacles by the suggestion of his keeper? Is that how you'd have him go? Is that free in the world? Hooded and manacled. No, let us not see his face, this little creature that one would slay on the street. And just in case they do, make sure he's manacled. Now, what is that? I is that assume... freedom? Is that going about in the world as an enlightened creature? I assume that the manacles are not true. I heard the clink. Hmm. All I can say is that I have a respect for Jax already. Of course, I also have a respect for you, Typhon. Don't take snide comments to heart. I'm going through a bit of a rough patch. Well, snide comments are the core of my vernacular as well. I feel we are speaking the same language if perhaps we are doing nothing more than deflecting serious questions while we go about them. Perhaps we deflect just a bit more and reveal secrets as we pass further. For now. I think there are some secrets, Typhon. One secret that I don't need to know. I just quietly nod and you see that intense, often envenomed eyes that dart about fall a bit more softly upon you. I take a deep breath, nod, 
and then turn, open a book, and begin to read through it. I'm going to retire to prayer to try to determine how my life has changed so much in such a short time. The uh, chamber that you are in is quiet. The occasional page turn from Typhon's bed. Um, but it seems that the uh, Temple of the Unfurled Scroll is not a place where there are raucous parties. So quiet contemplation, meditation, and prayer brings you a little bit of solace, but no clear direction other than what you've already seen. And Typhon, um, this would be the time when you would be become aware of the spells that are in this book. Sure. Um, they are a treasure trove for a mage such as yourself. Um, and you immediately begin plotting out which ones you will <laughs> be uh, transcribing first and what you will need in order to do such. So is let's there, see that. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Um, is there any time tonight or is that like, boop, read it quick and then bedtime? Um, I'll give you some time tonight. Uh, let's Just see. Just tell me how many hours or whatever and we, we'll I can go We'll say two hours. There and we can, okay, cool. I'll look, in, I'll look into all it. Right. Thank you. It's been a long day, so that's all, all you can manage. Your excitement keeps you awake longer than you probably should be. Hmm. Um, so let's see. That was Silas and Typhon in a room, and Falkron and Jax, you said you were going to be in a room, so that puts Rim and Doran in a room. So let's go on to Falkron and Jax. All right, friend. So what can you do? Well... When I was a goblin, oh, and I'm still a goblin, but when I was a goblin, I used, <laughs> I used to be a scout. A scout? Yeah. So they used to so send me, if there was a trap, they'd say, go and set that trap off. And I would go and set the trap off. Show me your hands. Show my hands. Well, yeah, you got all your fingers, so you must have been a pretty good scout. Yes. All right. All right. So you've got skills on you. And I see that, you say, pretty handy with that bow? Well, I can... I haven't hit anyone with it for a while, but yes, I can shoot things. I can hunt. Hmm. So how long have you been here in the temple? Good question. DM. <laughs> <laughs> how long uh, have I'm... I been here? Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. We're going to say... Um, a month. Four weeks, three days, and seven hours. You say been been keeping track of that, have you? No, I completely made that up. But about a month. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Goblin. You've you're funny. Is it true that all dwarves women have got beards? Do I have a beard? No, but I was only what I've told. So then, using your heightened wisdom, what do you think? Dwarves are still short, stumpy, and women don't have beards. Well-reasoned, Jax. Oh, I get it, yes. Any uh, any other questions about dwarven folk? Or... I'm sure I can figure some later. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, so we'll certainly have the time. Oh, by the way, do you really have manacles? Oh, yes, I do. And I pull them out. I put them on, and they look like they're locked, but then I just pull them off again. Ah! Uh -uh. Oh, nice. Is, is that some sort of trick to them? Like a like a release? Or how does that work? I made them myself, so yes. It just got a little release kit on them. Uh-huh. So you're a bit of a tinkerer then? Uh, I might be. I told you I've been used to setting off traps and opening locks. Ah, all right. well. I say I imagine you'll do just fine in our Motley crew. Now, I'm going to advise you to avoid... Anyone who just tried to get you cursed. So that would probably be the dragon and the backstabber. And then um, well, the paladin seems half, not half bad. But um, yeah. it, it's a motley crew. But they'll, they'll grow on you a little bit. Just give them a chance. Which one's the backstabber? 
<laughs> You'll know him. He's got the sort of slitty little eyes and whatnot. He talks a lot like this. But no, so it's, it's a thing. He's... Oh, someone might have cut his tongue. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, if he ever gets his, cu- his tongue cut, we might be a little better off as a party. But yeah. Oh, oh and, uh, and of course, uh, Lieutenant Doran, who leads the party well enough and, uh, well, certainly has slogged into the middle of it with <laughs> definitely taking his hits. Oh, there was this... There was this one point where he fell into the water and was like floundering for at least a good five minutes. We thought he we thought he was dead. Like, well, he wasn't. I mean, I I grabbed him to make sure he wasn't drowning. But oh man, it it was it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> but he's still can he alive, not swim? So. Uh, apparently not very well. Goblins um, are, t- are taught to swim at an early age when they get thrown in the water. Really? They just toss you in. Oh well, yeah. What? Well, that's how we learn to swim. Huh. Does does everyone make it? Well, of course. It's only a paddle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's good. Good con save there. Well, then. Uh, what do, do you do? Still... Well, me? Well, I... I'm a cleric. I, I pray. Oh. I, I I give my faith to the to this god of suffering, oh, Ilmata, and then... Uh, um, well, tell you what, uh, the next time you are broken and bleeding and in need of a friend on battle, I will remind you how boring I seemed. So you can heal me. That's excellent. Yes. Yes. I can heal you. Okay. Thank you. No, you, you, well, I haven't done it yet. So no need to thank me. Thank you in advance. Uh, Well, you're probably going to have to heal me a lot. Yeah. (laughs) I get thrown into a lot of traps. Well, I imagine that comes from being the, the puddle tossing and whatnot. Yeah, but, oh. but well, hopefully you'll uh, you'll figure out a way to diffuse the situation more often than not. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, uh, how long do you need to sleep? Uh, same as everyone else. Oh, didn't yeah, that's good. Learning things about goblins. Uh, take it. I'll be honest. You're going to be sleeping in my bed as you're sitting on my bed. Uh, no, no, I'll um. I'll definitely be over in the corner, just taking a moment of quiet reflection. And then also they're going to be coming in and checking in on me to make sure I'm not recursed. So. No, I think he's just lying. Just Father Pebble. No, does Father Pebble Moss lie very often? Uh, well, I've had a lot of people try and kill me, so he says that they're not going to try and kill me. So we'll see. Well, being the fact that you are not killed, I'd say he's been honest so far. True. Maybe he's not a liar. Yeah. Don't worry, Jax. Not all of us are out here to kill you. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> need to get off my bed now. I need to go sleep. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, um, You see a little mouse, actually. A little white mouse behind you. Oh. Oh, there you are. Come here. And he comes over and jumps onto my shoulder. This is my pet. Upon, see, upon seeing the mouse, just like the flashback of the uh, the vermin swarm, the hammer goes up and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's a pet. Yeah, it's a pet, He's, yeah. He's a friend of mine. Does does he he have a name? She yes, it's a mouse. Ma- you know... I'm gonna give you a warning. There's there's an owl named Hawk. I would watch out with mouse named Mouse around him. Just a heads up. You heard him. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, I'll leave the two of you to get your rest. Nice to meet you, Jax, and pleasure, Mouse. Yeah. We'll see. Good 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 night. And I'll climb into my covers. Night. I go ahead and sit down in the corner of the room. Can I like keep an eyes on him and Mouse? Me like. Strange bedfellows. All right. So that brings us to Rim and Doran. Well, I guess that's uh, by process of elimination, us together. Good night. (laughs) (laughs) Scene. (laughs) I've been watching.
watching you. Oh, what? Yeah. You are like no other flaming fist member I've ever encountered. Why are you a member of their ranks? Well, because I, I joined up uh, when I was too young and naive to know any better. <laughs> and I've been trying to do a little better than what most of them do. That must be very difficult to be surrounded by so much inappropriate activity, I suppose. It, it used to bother me more. I just worry about what's in front of me now. And I know that in higher places, there are people that want to see some change, but it'll take time. And do you feel like you were doing enough in the position where you are now? I'm doing what I can. You're very brave. I consider myself fortunate to be in your company. Well, I don't know if it means much to most of my fellows, but once you put those badges on, you're mine to protect. Well, for whatever it's worth, the feeling is mutual. The uh, ragtag crew that has been conscripted is <laughs> more honorable than most I've worked with. Do you have any idea why this group has been brought together? Orders, I don't know. It's coming from outside of my usual chain, so I don't have a lot of details. I've never spent this much time around so many people. It makes me rather uncomfortable. That uh, I don't think I can help you with. I no. grew up here, so I'm no, sure if I went far outside the city, it wouldn't take long before I was un quite uncomfortable. I have a feeling that's in our future. I'd rather not. I want to help this city. Hmm. Well, good night then. Good night. Um, Doran, as uh, you say that, you suddenly hear a voice in your head. It sounds like it's First, you're, you think, oh, God, is, is this the sword again? But it's not. It's Corcoran. A voice rings in your ears. Um, if you were to come and join me in the study again, I would appreciate it, Lieutenant Doran. I, I, I just lay down. And I stand, by, stand up. Uh, forgot to piss. And I leave. <laughs> and I'll go to him. Sure. So you walk back to the... Uh, so Doran leaves, Rim. Uh, you walk back to the uh, study. And Corcoran is sitting there with a pipe. And the, the lights are low. And there's a large cloud of smoke gathered around him. And he says, Ah, Lieutenant Doran, thank you. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I feel it's important that at least one person in your uh, group knows. Um, Jax is not long for this world. He, uh, his condition, his, his uh, grafting of illithid material onto his brainstem, it, uh, it provides him with uh, intelligence and uh, it's possible that it will provide him with more intelligence, but uh, it will eventually kill him. What uh, sort of timeline are we looking at? It's hard to say. Uh, he should at least live for the next few weeks, months, perhaps even years, but I doubt it. Oh. You understand now, I, I felt it was right for him to leave. There are those here who would wish to keep him under study for the duration of his life, and uh, that just seemed wrong to me. <laughs> it's my my forest gnome heritage, living creatures and all. But um, I just thought you should know. I, 
appreciate it if you wouldn't tell him. Fine. I appreciate you telling me this. I'll, uh, as long as he doesn't cause too much of the wrong sort of trouble, I have no problem bringing him along, giving him a bit of a laugh, as it were. Well, if he does cause trouble, he knows the consequences. I think, uh, I think we can help him out, at least a little, in the short term. Who knows, maybe we'll find something to help him longer term. Well, yes, there's always a possibility. We won't find it here. But, uh... <laughs> Wizard Tower, who knows what's up there? <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. I hope you have a good time. Be careful, though. All right. Is that all? Uh, yes, that is all. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Now I'll head back. Doran returns, Rim. Are you still awake or have you fallen asleep? Oh, you are muted. Muted. I roll over and uh, I mumble under my breath, long piss, and then I uh, roll back over and go to sleep. <laughs> all right. Um, during the night, uh, a couple of acolytes come and check on you, Falconer, um, and they check on you, Rim. Uh, but you are recovering well. The next morning comes, and you have all benefited from a long rest. Excellent. Every day, Lovely. my intelligence goes up by one. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, I'll be the most powerful wizard ever. Right. Very well. Is there anything that anybody wishes to do at the Temple of the Unrolled Scroll? I'm good. Does everybody understand what is expected of you? Yeah. Were, were we pointed in the right direction to get to that tower? I said, well, I believe it. The uh, the temple the Raz uh, Razamith's temple is is unmistakable to anyone who actually lives in Baldur's Gate, which is all of you. So um, I'm not even going to make you roll for it. It is a unique building. So one moment, if you please. There is it. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> so he clicks through his pages. Indeed. Many pages to click through. I like it. So, dawn comes. Uh, there is no need for any kind of a uh, ration. You are able to eat uh, breakfast. Um, there's, you seem to be very well taken care of. There are definitely people, uh, acolytes and uh, lower level uh, priests and novices and such that are not eating as well as you all are today. Um, Corcoran seems to have some clout here and he has seen to it that you are well taken care of. Um, you do not see him again in the morning, um, but you all meet, you all eat, and you are on your way. Ramazis Tower can easily be spotted from most upper city neighborhoods. Standing at about the midpoint between Old Baldur's Gate and the Black Dragon Gate, just to the west of the wide. It is considered a treasure by some and an eyesore by others. So the Black Gate is here. The Black Dragon Gate is here. Um, sorry, I'm seeing a bathhouse. We still have, yeah, we still have the dungeon map up. Oh. <laughs> All sorts of interesting things have been happening that none of you have seen because oh. I did not have you on the right <laughs> the square. The tower did pop up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do this. <laughs> there is Corcoran Pebblemoss. Oh. Oh. He's huge. I he's feel like gigantic. I already know him. <laughs> his, uh, his, his ego knows no bounds. Uh, and here is Jack. Oh, 
he's oh, adorable. Oh. And that was it. That was the only two things that uh, were happening. Well, I love it. <sighs> I'll, I'll get it one of these days, guys. I promise. Um, so the uh, the old Baldur's Gate is there. Black Dragon Gate is there. This is the wide. And right here, this circle right there is Remesis Tower. Uh, whatever the opinion, be it a treasure or an eyesore, its unique architecture cannot be denied. Standing at 11 stories and made of azure brick with bright red pagoda-like roofing between each level, it towers incongruously among the more typical Baldurian structures around it. A small chime cha sounds as you enter into a sumptuously decorated vestibule and lush red velvet curtains adorn the walls. Flames dance in silver wall sconces. A tall, gorgeously dressed human man with long, well-oiled, curly black hair and a manicured goatee greets you as you step into the larger hall. Welcome to Lorwakan's Imperbiables. I am Lorwakan at your service. Please, how can I help you? We seek access to the 11th floor. <laughs> it's a good joke, <laughs> but uh, uh, seriously, uh, what can I do for you? Uh, do you seek the Imperbiables enchantment? No, we seek the stairs. <laughs> I see. Um, I'm sorry, Doran, you were saying something? Uh, I hold up my badge. Flaming fist uh, business. We're going up. Ah, upstairs. <laughs> that is not my place. I stay here at the bottom and I have no troubles. The upstairs is very dangerous and is locked. Are you sure you want to go up there? Quite sure. Thank you. Uh -huh. I see. Again, I try, and again, I no succeed. The second floor is my private chambers, and I ask that you no go in there. More up these stairs, you will find what you seek. Many others go up, many others no come down. One. One come down. He jump, maybe from window, fall into street. Very dead. But I no stop you. It is to say, uh, your funeral. Hmm. He stands aside, <laughs> shaking his head. I'll just start heading in. Head up. Oh, good luck, guys. I'll, I'll wait here with this guy. Uh, no, Jax, I think you'll definitely need your uh, your skillful hands. Oh, so, okay. I go ahead and like put a hand on like the small of his back and start sort of like walking him forward. Now that you're indoors, uh, you are able to take off the manacles. <laughs> Do you remove your hood? Uh, if it's just us there, then yes. Oh, my God! It is a goblin! Uh, I, I, I will summon the watch! I, uh, he begins I, to run for the door. It is just a, it's, just a, it's just a halfling that we've uh, cast a spell on to disguise as um, a goblin. Oh, Definitely you are not. a fellow magic user, huh? I will um, cast Minor Illusion to make an image of a still little goblin right next to me. Oh, I better put my hood back on. Well, that's a great use of Minor Illusion, but I'm afraid you can't use Minor Illusion to create a living creature. Well, it's just an image like a goblin going, oh, well, it's completely it's still, here. correct? It's not he, moving. Can I... He can or is that context. not in the spell? Let me look. Uh, Sorry. That's, that is... That is you could make a statue. As, as a cat, yes, you could make a statue as a cantrip. An object. Yeah. Uh, okay. Got it. Okay. Um, so sorry. I uh, say so it doesn't matter. I've got manacles on. And I look. At I my would arms like to judge like, oh, the aesthetic of on. the everything next to him and just make the uh, image of something nice appear. Ah, like a. Uh, ooh, uh, let's make a um, a statue of one of the nymphs I saw in the bathing house. Oh right, so you make a little statue and a and a dresser. Ah, oh, that is nice. Oh, she's definitely a fitty. 
Um, so he's not a problem, this goblin. Oh, not, not at all. At all. Not at all. Mm-mm. No. But definitely medical now. Shh, shh. As you can see, he's he's with us. Oh, so. I see. I see. I see. You, <laughs> you bring him for, you bring him for the traps. Right. Yes. Oh, very clever. Very clever. Uh, right. Again, uh, the second floor is my private chambers. Please do not, uh, do not go in there. But uh, good luck. All right. <laughs> the way, I guess. So let's let's keep the hood up until we're cleared of any of. Until it's until it's just us, mm. yeah. not just us plus a guy. All right. You pass through the hallway towards the wide spiral staircase at stone at the back. After ascending one flight, you come to a fifteen by fifteen foot foyer as richly decorated as the downstairs. On the wall next to a double door made of oak hangs a tastelessly lavish portrait of Loro Akan, complete with cherubs. You can practically hear the choir of angels singing his praises. There is a door to the southern portion of this foyer, and then the spiral staircase continues up past it. I mean, he was just begging for us to look in, right? <laughs> um, I'm sure he would not take kindly to that. Oh, I'm, sh- I'm sure of that as well. He I, seemed, I'm just I so know curious. you're only joking, Typhon. I know you're only joking. Yeah, it's only Let's go joking forward. Indeed. And okay. I'm going to walk forward. Yeah. Go on. Does anybody not continue up the steps? I bet Jax couldn't pick that lock anyway. <laughs> oh, I definitely could. I put, starts pulling out his tools. <laughs> I, I like, I like, put my hands on Jax's shoulders. Like, nope, no, no, no. Oh, not this door. Okay, next door. Yeah, no, not this door. Not this door. All right. The next three <laughs> floors. <laughs> the next three floors reveal nothing remarkable. Although the doors leading from their respective foyers are locked, which is easily managed. Uh, with no uh, outward threat, Jax is able to take all the time he needs, and he's able to unlock these doors, <clears throat> which is something none of you could have done. The halls and chambers that lay beyond have been picked clean, probably decades ago. Nevertheless, bright flaming sconces provide ample light, and the floors and scattered items that are there are quite clean. But there's a faint smell of lemon oil in the air. On the sixth floor, you are momentarily alarmed, momentarily alarmed to see a small pile of dust moving itself across the floor into a corner, only to disappear in a puff of yellow smoke. Clearly, the magic employed by Ramazith to maintain his tower is still effective, <clears throat> even after a century of non-occupancy. As you leave each floor, the doors lock themselves with a soft click. It is not until you reach the foyer on the sixth floor that you see anything interesting. Hmm. Well, it now seems I believe that, that there, to there's a... far more of this that is revealed that I had originally intended. So if you could all just pretend you haven't seen all that. Not looking. Not looking. Seen what? I can see a door. Exactly. I don't see, see anything now. Sean, now you, hmm? do do I have the time to may i mage armor i just forgot to declare it um, sure you it's may kind mage of a armor. daily thing yes yeah absolutely mage armor thank you there you go so that was what was meant ah. to have been seen <sighs> i can't believe i forgot to do that but there you go um so this is the sixth floor abruptly the staircase of hewn stone ends. The flight that ascends to the seventh floor is made of sea green marble streaked with bronze. There is a luxurious blue runner laid along the middle third of the stairs and an intricately decorated banister of gold is affixed invitingly to the outer wall. To the south, 
stands the door to the six four chambers. Uh, just what do you do? Just quickly, Sean. Obviously, I've got no control over my token yet, but oh dear, easiest uh, way of doing token. it is deleting it and then deleting it out of my profile, and then drag the token in, and then add the token to my profile, and then it will save permanently after that. That's a pain. All right, so you have to run through that. Yeah. yeah so I, I did set point. it up so that it should be under your control. Yeah. So if I delete it, if yeah. you drag it over, will that work? No, no. Uh, it might do actually. Let's try. Uh, God, you're enormous! Yeah. That's my normal size, guys. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. He's... <laughs> his wisdom's getting even bigger! <laughs> that's that not work. his wisdom. Can you move him? Uh, yeah, I can move him, yeah. That's Great. Nice. Hey, problem so solved. Tiny. Yeah. Is he considered small? He is. What do I look at, or what do I see? I'm looking at the door, I, I presume, or is it open? It, it, yes, the door is closed. You are looking at the door. I'm um, hesitant to touch the doorknob. Typhon. The doorknob. <sighs> Shall we look for some traps, Jax? I'm looking at the doorknob. Give door us a knob. trap on a doorknob. Well, I can have a look. And I will have a look at the doorknob. Right, please make will, an investigation check for me. I will assist. Check. Oh, an investigation check with advantage. You are proficient in investigation? I am oh. Well, you are able to determine that the door Definitely is not trapped. not trapped. Let me open it. It is locked. Oh. Go for it. Has anyone got a key? I thought you had the key. Oh, yeah, I've got lots of keys. I'll pull out my uh, my key bar, which that's what I'm calling it, but it's actually Thief Tools. Okay. Um, I had this image of like a janitor's key ring with like just <laughs> a million freaking... Like, I own, I own, a little bit. <laughs> the door, this door is identical to the ones that you have been coming to as you climb the stairs, so you're very familiar with this lock. Um, roll a uh, Thief's Tool check with advantage this will be a dex check with thieves tools uh so that should be just the same as my sleight of hand and i'm assuming mm, i don't mean so occasionally you will need to use your thieves tools to do something that are not opening a lock rarely oh, yeah. but it's uh, the same bonus as my dex okay yeah uh, i'll just do that one <laughs> you are easily able to unlock this door oh it's exactly the same as this key Thank you very much, Jax. Well done, Jax. How kind of you. Tell me, Jax, do you have other skills? As I reach to open the door. Oh, Jax was a scout. A scout? Is that true, Jax? It was a deed. When I was a goblin. Now, what? a scout for a goblin, does that mean you actually ran ahead? Or does that mean that you just threw you into the first line of battle? A bit of both. Mm. Let's see what's behind this door, gents. Jax, is the door. way that they were talking to you at all condescending or demeaning to you? Definitely. Okay, just check. I was asking a righteous question. I don't know much about goblin culture, Typhon. Perhaps you could school us on the finer points of such things. With assistance from Jax. Let me ask you a question, Silas. Yes. Silas, when you pray at night, do you think really hard about your <laughs> God and let the wisdom come? Is that what you do, Silas? Yes. Let's get through the door, shall we? Let's. Uh, by the way, has <laughs> everybody um, uh, adjusted their hit points on their tokens to reflect their new maxes? Mm, we get a long rest. Yes. did. Um, Typhon, I, I, went ahead and and made, I went ahead and put Owl there. I assumed you would have summoned him again, but uh, I can delete uh, him if you wish. I, I did not plan that gold expenditure, so okay. um, <laughs> I was doing other things instead. So He's gone. Goodbye, Hawk Owl. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so Falkman has walked into the room. What does everybody else do? I walk in the room. We follow. Silas yeah. has walked in the room. Yeah. Rim has walked in the room. And Persephone. What, what do I see in the room? Oh, just a moment. <clears throat> As with the rest of the tower, magical flames in silver wall sconces ignite with a soft whoosh. As you step into this hallway, there are doors to the east, west, and south. At your feet is an old but well-maintained and expensive-looking carpet. I check if the wall sconces are actually bolted to the wall. Uh, make an <laughs> investigation <laughs> check. Five. <laughs> you 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 can barely reach it, but you jump up and grab one and hold it and sort of swing there for a minute. And yeah, it's bolted. There's no way it's coming off with just your with just your weight. Just checking it for traps. Good. Uh, what do you? So, so Sean, we have doors on pretty much all three sides of us, right? That's correct. All right. All right, Jax, which door first? Hmm. It looks all three. Do any of them look like they've been opened recently? Make an investigation check. Oh, I've still got that one open. 16. Hmm. Um, no. No, as a matter of fact, they all look completely the same. There are, and based on the cleaning that you've seen being done, uh, there's no way to see any tracks. There's no dust. They're immaculate. I will walk over to the east door and check if it's trapped. Investigation check, please. Seven. Definitely not trapped. Not trapped. I will see if it's locked. It is not locked. No, oh, not trapped, not locked. And I'll just open it. <laughs> <laughs> Kaboom. Very good. That sounds very good. The ubiquitous wall sconces flare into life as you open this door, but something doesn't feel quite the same. It takes a moment, but then it comes to you. There was no accompanying whoosh. As you step into the room, you experience a momentary disorientation as utter silence envelops you. You can hear nothing. Not even the sound of your own breathing. The sensation is unsettling. Along the eastern wall, six large bookshelves stand empty. An unremarkable blue rug rests on the floor, and there is a chair and writing desk with a lit lamp against the western wall. At the south of the room is a large leather chair resting on a bearskin rug. It is framed by two unlit floating candelabras and faces a cold fireplace. Falkner, what is your passive perception? Uh, passive perception is a 16. Okay. Good to know. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and move towards the uh, the leather chair and see if there's anything like on it or around it. All right. Show me where you move, please. All right. Stop. As you step onto the southern portion of the rug, I'm going to move you back, Falkron, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. It suddenly shakes and elevates into the air, wrapping you up as it does so. And a fine coating of dust explodes off of it as it does and fills <sighs> the room for 30 feet. Let us see here. I believe we will say Typhon that that does not affect you because you are outside of the door, but it will affect everybody in the room. Everybody, please make a saving throw, a constitution saving throw. Oh, they're my best. <laughs> yes, 19. Excellent. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> All right, if you'll give me a moment, please, to set up this 
encounter. Shouldn't take encounter. But a moment. This what 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 the old Hagrid moment. Oh, uh, I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> Shouldn't have told you Shouldn't that. Shouldn't have told you that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it was. Should not have told you that. Should not, not have, have told said you that. that. I do that all the time. I, oh my god. You know, they're fighting some mystery monster or whatever and I say and then Please. the night hag Oh. oh. Well, so right. now you know it's uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, just I a was, second here. I thought I had. I was, this. How you know? It's okay, Sean. Take a minute. I was I was playing in a game with one character, and he uh, he has these inspiration, his ancestors in his past, mm-hmm. and there's like a dozen that are cool, and there's five that are the unnamed. And he goes to cast a spell, and he spits out the name, and then he goes, "Wait, I I didn't say that. That's one of the unnamed." Um, <laughs> <laughs> And years and years of training for nothing. Yeah. All right. This, uh... So there's a, a secondary effect that's going on here. There, this this uh, rug, as you stepped onto it, is coated in uh, dust of sneezing and choking. So all of you who failed your saving throws, the DC was 15. <gasps> um, mm-hmm. You all of a sudden become unable to breathe. You're sneezing uncontrollably. You are incapacitated and suffocating. You have a round per uh, constitution point. So, uh, just quickly as well, everyone needs to update their uh, D and D Beyond with their hit points and stuff. Yes. So, Sean, just to clarify, like. What is what is their current condition then? Are they considered to be poisoned or they're incapacitated? You're not poisoned. Incapacitated. Okay, incapacitated, okay. Um, which means you're unable to make any moves or actions, and you are choking. Which means if you continue to fail saves on this, you will die very quickly. Um, you have gone past the point where you can uh, hold your breath. Uh, you are now to the point you are choking. You have one round per point of constitution left to stop choking. Uh, let's roll bonus, initiative, right? please. Yes, constitution bonus. Let's roll initiative, please. Mm-hmm. We were, then they all went away. Oh. <laughs> we'll do it again. R- roll again. <laughs> because I said so. Exactly the same, right? Yes, exactly. Miraculously. Oh, we've all got to do it, yeah. Ooh, oh, Typhon yeah. did roll a one oh. both times. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm. Um, I keep forgetting to select the token. So I'll probably do this. I and of course, every time I forget, I roll a natural twenty after that. So <laughs> it's fun. All right. So what should that actually be? Nineteen. I'm. I'm entering it. I can change it okay. myself. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, mine's the one last thing to oh, do. Yeah. Falkrin, yeah. if you could put yourself on top of that. On top of that. All right. We'll yes. do. It has rolled up and covered you in this dust, and you're sneezing and choking uncontrollably, and it rolls up into a roll, and there's a little wad of you, like a falcon burrito, Ooh. and it Jeez. is holding you tightly, and it's banging you on the ground. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Rim, your turn. Oh, you God. Are, you do not hear anything coming from this room. <laughs> um... He's got line of sight for us. I do have line of sight. What can I <laughs> you, can I see? Doran suffering. You suddenly see. Yes, Doran just watch over, uh, bend over, and he's just he's doing something. It looks like he might be sneezing, but without the sound, it's really hard to tell what he's doing. 
All right. Um, I'm going to uh, just step over a little bit uh, and and look into the room without entering. And I and I, I assume I see uh, the Falcon burrito. Well, so you step into the room and immediately all you can hear is nothing. And you do see a large rug that is standing in the room and just sort of whirling around and banging on the floor. Uh, and you do not see Falcon. So it seems like a good guess that that's where she is. Oh, God. Um, I don't want to shoot it. Um, I'm not sure do what it. I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, all right. I will, um, I, I will take a shot at the burrito. I will okay. uh, draw my bow and... Uh, Did it work? Did it click? It did not click. There we go. So I'm going to just quickly go through here and see who is incapacitated. That would be Falkron. Oh. Is she the only one? No, I, I rolled the 15. Oh. oh, that's your initiative. Yes. All right. You're fine. Well, actually, you are, you are grappled and restrained oh inside the <laughs> Fine, as far as Falkrun goes. Yes, yeah. you are not incapacitated, so you can't attempt to escape. Um, but you are also being smothered. Ah, um, did anybody fail the saving throw? Silas did. Silas did. All right, Silas, I I did you are well. incapacitated. Dorn did Dorn. as well, I believe. Dorn, you are also incapacitated. Ah, inconceivable. <laughs> so that was rim so you shoot and what ac do you hit uh Let's 27 see. that is definitely a hit it's a crit. you did We're... it's a crit it is a crit I I is a, yes yeah so Alcrin uh, is dead <laughs> Alcrin, you feel something strike the uh, uh rug and poke you in the side you take six points of piercing damage oh sorry falcon worth it <laughs> Next we have Typhon. Well, actually, so as a Gloomstalker, uh, in my first turn, I get a second attack. Really? Um, oh. I do. Um, then, uh, by all means. I shall take another shot, hopefully uh, unleashing Falkrin from the... That is not going to hit. Well, that's a uh, rug. Hang on. It, <laughs> the rug it is, is a, a rug. Ten. However, it is a rug that is thrashing around wildly, and the arrow goes wide and it hits the ball. <sighs> so so at least we know it's not a lying rug. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let's see here. I um, can see. Good. So that is the end of Doran's turn, unless you wish to move anymore. Uh, no, Rim, Rim is going to stay put at the uh, entrance. So, the turn, okay. Right, Typhon, your turn. Okay, um, I will actually enter the room. Right, immediately silence covers your ears. Um, and try to drag Silas out of the dust. The dust has settled. It has done its oh. damage. I see. Okay. Um but they're still incapacitated and, and suffocating. Is there a way to solve this for the failures? Um, um, you can attempt to help him with his next uh, saving throw. Okay, so they're just choking against it, basically. Yes, they are They are suffocating. They're sneezing. They're unable to breathe. Um, as long as they're conscious, challenge. as long as they're conscious, you'll be able to repeat a saving throw at the end of each of your turns. Okay. And the effect ends on a success. Got it. Um Unfortunately, I will assess that they are fine. Um, they're not dead. They're not almost <laughs> dead, so they're okay. Um, <laughs> I will cast... Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Falcon. I'm going to scorch the rug. Burn it. Burn a hole in it. What? What's the spell? I will... Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, let's see here. Uh, from my staff, I start whispering, Sash. Um, there, are, there is no and sound there that be, emanates, uh, no sound oh. emanates when you whisper. Okay, I forgot about that. 5, 10, 15, 20, Sword in your head. 5. Um, mm -hmm. Shit, I went too far into the room to be able to get back out to cast. So, um, 
Oh boy, this was a right mess. <laughs> I was right here. I will go here and give the help action against the next attack against the rug. Or can I give the help action against Fulcrin trying to escape? Like trying uh, to grab the I'll tell you what, rug. Make a perception check. And if you are able to perceive exactly where Fulcrin is, yes, you will be able to hold the rug in such a way that it might facilitate Fulcrin. <laughs> it's, it's the bloody spot. That's where she's at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look for I the arrow. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, let's give this a roll. Hey! Ah, that is just fine. 17. No problem. You are able to... You see a falcon shape bump in the rug, and you are able to sort of uh, grab part of the rug and, and, you know, sort of, like, you know, pull it. You can't say anything, but you think you're helping. Cool. I... Yeah. I mean, you you only oh. mentioned that silence about four different times. <laughs> it's I, all right. I can't cast spells in there. <laughs> And then you say it's my turn, and I run yeah. right in. You, you failed that wisdom <laughs> check. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. No problem. Oh boy! Well, you can't uh, anyway. spells. Okay, that's, that's my turn. Horrible. Silas, you are next. Yeah. So I'm coughing and hacking. What, you what are, do I do? You are you are incapacitated. You can do nothing but sneeze and hack silently until the end of your turn. At which point you make another uh, Constitution saving throw. Okay, it's the end of my turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 13. That is not enough. What is your constitution bonus, Silas? Plus three. Plus three. So that is one round gone. You begin to claw at your throat, realizing that if you can't catch a breath soon, you are going to go unconscious. That is Silas done. Doran, uh, much like Silas, you yep. lean against the wall, coughing and sneezing, unable to do anything. Uh, you uh, come to the end of your turn, roll a constitution save. No, that is not enough. How? What is your constitution bonus, Dorn? Four. Four. So he, you have three more rounds, and you also begin to like realize. Wait a minute, this is serious. Uh, I can't catch a breath. That's the end of Doran. Now the rug goes. Falkron, you automatically take. Fourteen points of bludgeoning damage. Max damage. Can we, can we call that burrito damage? Indeed. <laughs> Man. That was, wow. Max damage. Um, that is Oof, the end yeah. of the rug's turn. As it blasts you into the ground. Just a massive hit. Falkron, it is your turn. Is it silent inside the rug? It is silent okay. inside right. the rug. However, you feel that there might be somebody out there side of the rug trying to help you all right so can i do like a strength check against this rug so this would be like... an athletics check lovely all right that is not enough you are oh, still boo. being oh, wait, you have... the advantage from my... an advantage though you do have advantage indeed Phew. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay on three one two <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, I'm oh, sorry, wow. Falkrin. You are still. Oh in boy! Place. I tell you what, uh, Persephone is going to sing a song about Falkrin the burrito and and yeah. the oh, death man. that followed. I'm, I'm oh. thinking that I'm going to bring Persephone in on this. Uh, one moment, please. Because there's definitely not going to be a fireball, guys. Just so you know. <laughs> We're gonna have. So what happens when the, the wizard tries to help you with your strength check? I know. <laughs> We're gonna have her go uh, last. <laughs> all right so that brings us to Jax. um with a passive perception of 16 can mm -hmm. i see roughly where the dwarf is um or would you require a perception i imagine just the slightly widening red spot in the middle yeah. of the rug yeah it's yeah, that is that's that is enough. It is. I would say it is not quite a hard perception check, so uh, you are easily able to see. Okay. Um, now, how do you do uh, sneak attack? So, if is it, if I'm hidden, I get advantage, or if I'm flanking, if, I get advantage. If the if the um, we're not doing we're not doing flanking. Yeah. If you have advantage on the attack. For whatever reason, 
if it uh, so long as the target has a discernible anatomy yeah you get a sneak attack right okay the rug unfortunately does not have a discernible anatomy okay i will just go and try to help cut her out all right make uh, an attack please knowing where she is with my short sword so okay missed no. Yes, I'm afraid that is not enough. It's flopping around so wildly, you're not able to get a good hit. Okay. All right, that brings us to Persephone. Persephone comes running in, begins to sing, and realizes she can't, looks around wildly, and takes a step back. And she gives... Falkron, well, this does Bardic Inspiration. You have to be able to see the character to do Bardic Inspiration. This is I've never played a Bard. I think see, I think you have hey, to hear it. Yeah, I mean it's it's yeah. So Rim depending on the, the delivery of the Bardic Inspiration, right? You have to be able to hear it because her thing, is, be her thing is verbal. Yeah. I mean, if she was a mime, then it wouldn't matter. But I don't know that that's her skill set. No, it's not her skill set. Uh, so Bardic Inspiration, I suppose, is out. She uh, she could do raises it. her instrument and she's. I, she kind of looks around wildly and just pulls out her crossbow and fires at the rug. And she hits. Yay! Falkron, you take three points of piercing damage. Yay! <laughs> Pinata. Yeah. All right, that's the end of that round. We're back to the top. Really? All right. Um, if I were to run in and try to pry her out of the uh, rug, that would also be an athletics check. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. That's that's what I'm going to do there. So what we'll do here, it is flopping around quite significantly. So make an unarmed attack. An to unarmed see if you attack. Can, to see if you can initiate a grapple. Okay. Uh, let's see. It will oppose... It does not succeed. So you have grabbed it. Now you wish to make an athletics check to see if you can pull it apart and uh, release Falkron. That is what I would like to do. All right. Well, that is enough. You pull and pull and there's a ripping sound and Falkron falls to the floor, no longer grappled and restrained by the rug. Thank you. Here, here's your here's your arrow back <laughs> Typhon it is your turn okay I will learn from my past turn and you run. take an attack of opportunity as <laughs> that's you fine move that even turn. even with it grappled uh, even with it grappled it's not okay. it's not restrained so it, okay. it cannot move but it cannot but it can attack okay so hitting AC 24 Typhon 24. Yeah, that'll do it. So please put yourself back. Now you are smothering inside oh, the it is automatic. It is an automatic grapple and you are now enveloped within it and it is squeezing the life out of you. You are blinded and let's see. There. You are restrained and blinded and at a risk of suffocating. Okay. Um so that is the end of your turn silas i am in my second round of not being able to do anything i hack Indeed. and cough and spit and i'm choking and it's the end of my turn so i'm going to do a con save and it is a 22. Hey! Uh, you are able to expel the dust of choking and sneezing with one final hack silent hack and uh you are yourself again you will be able to act on your next turn. Thank Doran. You. I attempt to give myself Heimlich Maneuver. <laughs> you succeed. <laughs> and you spray the wall and Persephone a bit with uh, your spume. And uh, you are now yourself again. You will be able to act on your next turn. Great. The rug goes. You take 10 points of bludgeoning damage, Typhon. Okay. 
it bl- bl- much like uh, Falkrin, it blasts you against the floor. Falkrin, you are not incapacitated, you are not blinded, and you are not restrained. You are, however, prone. I think the silence, the silence of the yeah. room has severely yeah, like affected it. Falkrin. <laughs> very, very, very much in character. I like it. I thought I was going for an ambiance there. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to pick myself back up, and then I'm going to turn and just go ham on this freaking carpet with a hammer, not having seen that it had picked up Typhus okay. or Typhon. All right, so I'm going to turn around and hit it with a hammer. Uh oh! Here comes the hammer. Enough. That is enough. Um, Typhon, you take five points of bludgeoning damage as a hammer blasts against you. All head. right. Now, Sean, am I able to perceive that I make contact with something that's a little more skishy? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> You're a crack. Well, you don't hear anything. Oh, yeah, but right. like, <laughs> you feel a crack. More of a feel like, it kind of vibrate through my arm it, a little bit. You're like, well, that that felt like hitting a person. Where's Silas? Uh, where's Where's Typhon? Uh oh. Um, so that is Falkrin done. Jade, uh, Jax, your turn. Um, I will obviously seeing all that happen. I will now try to cut uh, Typhon out. <laughs> okay. um, can I use an offhand weapon, or is that a later level? Um, you at, with fifth edition, anybody is able to use an offhand weapon at any time. Okay. So uh, it, you you don't get to add. You have to use your bonus action to attack with it, and you do not get to add your uh, modifier to damage. Right, okay. So the first one is my short sword. Um, Is that going to come up? 17, 7 piercing. Yeah. All right. I'm hoping because I know where he is, it's not going to hit Typhon. That's like a called shot, yeah? That is a a called shot. So let's see. Um... I thought that's there's not, re- the there's not really called shots in fifth edition, but I suppose we can there's, arbi- there's... we can arbitrarily make the difficulty five give an added five to his AC, uh, which means that you do succeed in striking the rug in such a way that it damages the rug, but manages to not hurt. Okay, Typhon. I will do that then, and then I will so try it's... to also then come in with the dagger. And try and cut where I've just cut again, and miss. Yes, unfortunately. You will. Is that twelve? The first one there. The tw- that's always the first one. Yeah, twelve. Just so twelve. The twelve does hit, but it does not hit the seventeen required to not harm Silas, okay. uh, not harm Typhon. So um, that plus six. That was so. This damage here. That's just the dagger, right? Um, there should be no added bonus. There should be so no the first bonus. one was a short sword, which would would have the damage, yeah. Correct. Which would be the seven, so that would be three plus four. Uh, the second one missed anyway. No, the twelve. The twelve hits the rug. It oh, just okay. Also hits, it just um, also hits. Typhon. Then that's just one damage. Just be, yeah. So one damage. Okay. Yeah. Um. So take one damage of piercing Typhon. Okay. Sorry. The, the rug is beginning to look rather tattered. Um, now, Persephone. Persephone goes. Um, let me see. I'm going to look at her character sheet and try and find something useful. Bard spell with no verbal. I, I think well, definitely the longbow. The longbow. She, she is, yeah. She is all right where she is. She was not affected by it. Um... She didn't take any new spells. So. Yeah, she's going to just shoot it with a crossbow. She's also going to, seeing that uh, there seemed to be some benefit for um, Jade doing, um, Jax doing a uh, called shot, she's going to attempt that as well. I'm going to have to look up uh, rules for called shots. We're going to go with it for now. Um, and if it is something that we can find a, a good set of rules that everybody agrees on, we will continue it for the future. But for now, we're going to say a f- plus five to the AC with a cold shot. And she missed completely anyway, so we're good. 
Um, that is the end of Persephone's turn. Next up, we have top of the order, Rim. All right. So, uh, do I need to make another grapple in order to try to get Typhon out? No, you, your grapple is still initiated. You're still okay. There, so, so I can I can just athletics him out. Hopefully, indeed. Uh, that uh, is 17. enough with another rip. <clears throat> cool. You're able cool to shot is just disadvantage. That's what it is. Is it disadvantage? Oh, yeah. thank you for looking that up. All right. So from now on, cold shot will be disadvantage. The uh, the you're able to pry the rug apart enough so that Typhon falls out and falls prone on the floor. Oh, look, it's the wizard. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> hears you say that. Um, Silas, uh, no, uh, Typhon, it is your turn. Okay. Um, you're able to I will... Breath. What's that? You're able to breathe. Yeah, I will simply uh, draw a dagger and... Um, Try and rip through it. Go for it. Yeah, there's that. Six <laughs> to hit as I slash that's, at it. That's damage. It threads and that's that's bizarre. Um, <laughs> I don't know it why that would damage. be. Yeah, um, let's try that again. I draw my dagger and try and <laughs> viciously <laughs> slice at it. Hey! <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Amazing. So, so we'll go with that six as the initial damage. So roll double damage. <laughs> as I hiss. Be, oh, wow. Fantastic. It's a good dagger good. slash as I hiss <laughs> through my teeth violently that no one can hear. So we're going to say that that was the six plus the seven. Is that how we're going? It's seven. It was a three. I think the roll oh, okay. was a three. That's yeah. fine. I could, you can do that. It'd be That's a seven six, plus zero. three. So 10. I don't know what, why the three. Sorry. The damage you rolled was three plus three. It's a D4. Which was... Oh, so okay. D4. So D4. So you rolled three and then yeah. another. And then Got a four so plus three. Four. So Got four so plus three plus. 10 damage. 10 damage. Okay. 10 damage. So because there's nobody in it, it seems to do more damage than. Uh, some of the other attacks that have been doing very good. The rug is, you could see holes in it. It's barely uh, being held together. Um, that is the end of Typhon's turn. Silas. With bleary eyes and just a messed up face, I'm going to first stand up and then plunge my glaive into that thing. It, it didn't attack me. Um, do I have advantage on that? No. No advantage. Doesn't look like you're directly flanking either. Okay. Um, you could move so that you but are. But I can't. Hey, so, look at that. <laughs> let's just take that. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, the final blow is yours, Silas. Uh, stepping forward. Although I can't verbalize it, I noticed that Typhon tried to save me and then was attacked by the burrito maker. I lunge forward with my glaive slicing it cleanly in two from top to bottom. It falls to the ground in tatters, split clean into two pieces. Indeed. I've got a big stick. You feel sure that you would have been able to hear a slight sigh of pain if only you could hear anything. I then start stamping on it like it's on fire. <laughs> I reach <laughs> <I'm Typhon. laughs> I will uh, reach my claw out and help Typhon stand. All right. Okay. I will. I will he will accept. Um, Danger seems to be passed. It does. Yes. I will go Silas ahead and is remove dead, the. Not Silas. Uh, Dorin's dead, though. Yes, Dorin. Uh, I'm afraid you need to make. No, wait. You. Uh... Oh, he succeeded. <laughs> you succeeded. You succeeded. Just, so you're good. Never... Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> So you're all standing there sort of gesturing wildly and, and like, oh my God, this is, but of course, not a single sound can be heard. I uh, wave for everybody to move back out into the hallway. Yeah. Um, anything? I mean, is this like a study here? This looks like it might be a library. Uh, but I'm, there is I'm going one. to That's look at the, uh, I think the bookshelves were all empty, was it? Yeah, that is the strange thing. These bookshelves yeah. appear to be completely empty. What about the desk? Is there actually anything on the desk? Make an investigation check, please. 
I was moving to Can do I that help? when I was suddenly sneezified. Are you proficient? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a second and uh, cure myself. To cure 20. One. All right. Excellent. I, I crit the investigation. <laughs> Very good. Are you okay? You've got a few holes in you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, let me see here. So you rifle the papers, you open the desk. Um, none of the doors are locked. Some of the papers are written in languages you don't understand, um, but you don't see anything that looks particularly interesting at the moment. However, there is something odd. Um, the light here isn't quite right. There is a lit lamp on this desk, but the light appears to be coming from the sconce to the side. And you move your hand around the lamp and look on the desk and realize that the lamp is not actually casting any light. It just looks like a lit lamp. As though miming, I look at Typhon and I wave my hand in front of the, in front of the lamp. I show that, and I kind of use my hands to show that there's no light, there's no nothing coming off of this supposed light source. Um, and then move to grab the lamp. All right, your hand passes through. And I'm assuming since Typhon was assisting me with the investigation, he sees this clearly. Yes, and now yeah. that you have moved your hand through the illusion, you see clearly that this light is an illusion, looking like a lit lamp, but not effectively casting any light. Is it part of a larger illusion, which I can discern? Um, well, uh, you touch the desk, you touch the wall. Uh, they seem to be real enough. Hmm. I look at Typhon, kind of shrug my shoulders, like, um, any ideas? I point towards the other ones. Are they also illusions? Uh, you can go check. Yeah, I would like to. All right. Um, show me where you're walking. Be careful. <laughs> Walk slowly. Yes. All right. Um, make a investigation check, please. And I am not proficient, so I cannot assist, but, ooh. Excellent. Well, as you touch each of these lamps, uh, you realize that they are real. They are not hot, but they are, uh, they do have a flame in them, and they are casting light the way flame would cast. However, as you do your investigation check, you notice there's a little bit of discoloration on the floor underneath you appears to be a cleaned, but still unmistakable, large blood stain. Hmm. Is that visible to you? Yes. Yes. All right. Good. Anybody else want to do anything? Um, I'm going to come back into the room and I'm going to... Uh, Take a closer look at the bookshelves and see if there's if it if they are in fact empty or if it's they just appear empty. Well, when you put your hand out, I'm not even going to make you roll for this because it is obvious as soon as you put your hand on the books that there are books on these bookshelves, just completely invisible. I make the I make a gesture to indicate that the shelves are full. It takes you a moment because both Silas and Typhon are busy. Um, so they don't really notice what you're doing. <laughs> I was gonna say, do I need like a passive perception to see if he came in? <laughs> I'm gonna doing say that. Dance. I'm gonna say that with no combat going on, it is possible eventually that that Rim is able to get your attention, and uh, he motions to you that uh, that 
there's something going on with the bookshelves. You come over and touch them, and you realize that, in fact, there are books on these bookshelves, just invisible. Okay. I'm going to move down towards the southern part of the room, mm -hmm. assuming that it's a standard compass. It is. I walk in th over the area where we most recently fought our fiercest battle with the uh, tapestry and uh, come to the, I believe it was a large leather chair. Large leather chair uh, on a bearskin rug um, and floating candelabra. I kick the chair. Do I make contact with anything? You do. It is not an illusion. A floating candelabra. Mm -hmm. Is it shedding light properly? Is it they lit? are they are unlit. Mm. As is the fireplace. Hmm. While you're doing that, if I may, I'm going to take one of the books mm. off the shelf and move it out of the room to see if it materializes. It does not. Mm. So he ha he's holding a book which is still invisible. Yep. But you assume it is the book. Mm. Um, and I'm going to need you to make a perception check to see if you can figure out where you took it from and put it back in the correct place. If that is what she wishes to do. Nine. I will go back and try to... Could I... Sorry. Can I stop him with the book and kind of lead him to one of these lights and see if they can, they're like mm -hmm. visible under the light of one of these particular like weird invisible they torches? Not. Okay. If that was tried before, I apologize. No, it was not. All right. I will attempt to put it back. Or at least uh, rest you, it alongside. You, you, you're, it's, it takes you a while, again, with no, with no um, threat. By moving your hands along the books carefully, feeling some are big, some are small, but you find a place that seems like, okay, this, this, a book could fit here. You're not <laughs> sure it's exactly the right spot, but it's close enough. I'll exit. And... Shall we take the papers on the desk? So there's, well, anyway. Do we know what the manuscript looks like? Do we, do we it was just a... I, I, I looked at it. It was, it seemed unremarkable, but I have no way to tell you that. Hmm. Um, You're talking about the thing that you were looking for from Corcoran? Correct. It is a book entitled... Um, oh, that's right. The uh, De Decrypting the Inferno. A comprehensive study of the innards and reproductive biology of our devilish cousins. You said there was something weird about the sconce, the the sconce that I'm facing right now. Is that the correct? The sconce seems to be normal. The determination was that the uh, the lamp on the desk is an actual an illusion. And as you sort of gesture to Silas and um, Typhon, they they are able to make clear to you as such. Okay, I see. All right. Shall we went? Hmm. Um, we're looking for a manuscript. We're looking for a book, and I'm in a library. I have this <laughs> strange feeling that perhaps I'm bothered by this entire room. Um, That's true, um, but also keep in mind, this is the sixth floor of 11. An 11 floor, yeah. So... Um, the, the torches and the wall sconces, they appear to all be real. Yes. Uh, after the check going around and touching each one, mm -hmm. none of, none of them, your hand doesn't move through any of them the way that it does on the table. I'm just going to grab the one in this corner and toss it in the fireplace. Um, make a, uh, strength athletics check. See if you can pry it off the wall. Okay. I was thinking it'd be easier, but. I can oh crit goodness. that with a 25. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I rip it off. <laughs> but no one can hear me being and the Incredible Hulk. Muscles bulge and you, bullets of sweat start pouring off your head as you pull this thing out of the masonry. Um, you now have a continual flame sconce in your hand made of silver. 
I'm going to poke it into the fireplace and see if it lights anything in the fireplace. The nature of continual flame is, is it casts no heat. It, it lights oh, nothing. Yeah. It casts, wait, it lights nothing? or it, a, it, it lights as in it lights a fire. Yeah. Nothing. Right. Okay. Well, crap. Um, I guess I'm just going to walk out with my fancy new torch. <laughs> There's How heavy and I... big is this thing? Is it unwieldy? No, it's actually quite wieldy, and you could use it as a torch. It's possible somebody would be interested in buying it. Um, the uh, the enchantment alone costs at least seventy five gold pieces. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to it for the moment. I don't know if I can make it stop. Is the problem? <laughs> but let's do continue. <laughs> Typhon, anything else you wish to do? Oh, did we leave all the books behind? They're all on the shelf, yeah. Hmm. I'll just continue with the group. I right. have very few hit points as well. Peer pressure. Come on out here, Typhon, so I can administer yeah. to you. Once we're out of the room, I, I ask, actually I do ask Typhon to come over. And I'll ask him. It, it, I, I observe that Falkrin's wounds seem improved. Yeah, no, I've, I've been sitting in the hallway, like catching my breath, being like, I hated that. <laughs> oh, I can understand. You've got an arrow here, and I tag at it. Okay, You've got I'm a cut to here. And Thank you. Hit. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you. Granted that Typhon will allow me, I'm going to heal him. Very good. Roll that healing. I will wound. allow it. There Thank we go. Not for Ooh. much. Did Was you that do just it twice? twice? You didn't mean to do it twice, right? I did. I don't know why it did. It only shows that I did it once, but okay. So it was the same number each time. If you did do yeah. it twice, no, I rolled didn't. twenty <laughs> goblins just once. I just suppose once. I should stop saying goblins and start saying gremlins. The yeah, yeah, gremlins. Racist. I, I did guess. notice, by the way, that there's been obviously with an update to Chrome that it was doing it for me as well. Clicking once would roll twice. You have to uninstall the D&D, uh, the Beyond 20 thing and reinstall it. But that could be Was it just for time. spells? It's for, near enough everything. It was doing it to me last week and I was sitting there thinking, oh, why is it doing that? So I just literally yeah. uninstalled the extension and reinstalled it on, so then it was fine. But that's another time. Right, what do you do next? Um, does, does that help much, Typhon? It will suffice for now. Thank you. Which door would you like me to open? Which one has the most sinister doorknob? Point towards this one. (laughs) I will check it for traps. Roll that investigation, please. Perhaps we don't have the whole picture. Definitely not trapped. Not trapped at all. I'll go to open it. It opens. Say, told you. <laughs> I'll walk in. One moment, please. And then I set off a fireball trap on the floor. Yeah. All right. This room is extremely well lit. You can see it, right? You can't. Nope. We cannot. Well, it's obviously not that well lit then. Yes. I bring my fancy new torch in. <laughs> yeah. And- Shine oh, the light in to illuminate ah. it, and, and you see, <laughs> voila! Oh, you saw me try to get one earlier, and this is oh, this is you've you've given this to me, right? This room is extremely well lit, illuminating several work tables and shelves along its walls, jars, vials, and alembics, mortars and pestles, crucibles and mysterious contraptions reveal this room to be an arcane workshop. There is a darkly stained table toward the middle of the room, bearing an assortment of sharp instruments. A blood-red rug stretches from wall to wall. Midway through the room, close to the eastern wall, a five-foot-wide circle of faintly glowing runes slowly rotates along the floor. To the south, a large blue-tinted glass window lets in soft light from the midday sun. I can't go in there, there's a rug. Typhon, it's for you. (laughs) Well, that one coming, truly. Uh, I have to give softballs like occasionally. I step interesting back. work was done here. Yes. <laughs> mm. yep, I'm stepping back too. Like, this is not my 
forte. Typhon, can will... you make a straight intelligence check? Yeah. For me? Hey, yep, we're yep, inclusive yep. here. Alright, that's that's good enough. Um you look at this window and something about it is bugging you, but you can't put your finger on it. But what if I go put my finger on it? Just <laughs> <laughs> Something about this window. Just something something strange. Okay. Do you need can my I, torch, Typhon? Can I go closer and look and motion one or two others over and kind of point at it? All right. Who do you motion over? Uh, let's see. Silas was helping me before, so I will... Silas. The others seem to be afraid of the room. I don't really know why. It's got a rug in it. Uh, does anybody else... <laughs> did you motion to anybody else? <laughs> There's only one doorknob in here. I don't know why people are scared. Like you've never seen a bloodstained table with instruments on it before. Oh, I have. Oh, yes. I wonder. I wonder if uh, Jax refuses to enter the room at all. What is your passive perception, um, Typhon? Oh, like ten. Yeah, ten. And yours, Silas? Eleven. All right. As you step there, Typhon. You look down and realize that they're very, very faintly on the carpet. There seems to be some runes. Uh, if you will excuse me, I'm trying to reveal them. There we go. I see a rune. Ah, oh, two. Two runes? Two. And rune. Oh, wait. Uh, I, uh, there should I, be another rune right there, but for some reason it is not visible. No, so there are. No, it's there. there. There's two. Yep. There's two. No, there's, there should be three. There should be one oh. right there. It was there a moment ago. I did something that took it away. Okay. But it, it should be there. Um, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, Typhon. You okay. have activated a glyph of warding. Ah! I get the uh, advantage. Let me talk we, about that. I don't know why people didn't go in the room. <laughs> Says the walking burrito. 17. Yeah, right? 17. Uh, you step onto this rune and you immediately realize what you have done and fear grips you as you feel its effects starting to take, uh, start feel its effects starting to take effect, but you're able to center yourself and allow it to dissipate. If you had failed, it would have compelled you to open the window and jump out. Typhon, are you okay? You looked yes. shaken. Yes. Um, watch your feet. There was a glyph here that um, I noticed and was able to briefly disarm. And can I see that now? Yes. Um... I really wish you could show you all three of them. I, something I did made that one go away. There are three glyphs. Um, they are very specific shapes. They don't seem to be a uniform. Um, they're all three different. May I use a do like an use Arcana or something like uh, either that Arcana to be able to diffuse or the others. Be able use either Arcana. I really, or I really think you should, Typhon. Okay, I will attempt to do so. I. Uh, y hmm. These cannot be diffused by an Arcana check. Oh, okay. I thought you... I, I, would he recognize... I, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Oh, I okay. I apologize. Yeah, I will try to identify them in that case. Right, um, so either a religion or an Arcana check. Okay. Uh, it is very easy to uh, realize that this symbol is the symbol of Mistra, the goddess of magic. That would be this, the one in the middle. Mm -hmm, this would be the symbol of Azuth, the uh, sim the uh, god of mages, and over here, which you can't see, was a symbol in the shape of a gear, which was the uh, symbol for the god Gond, who is the god of uh, alchemists and tinkerers. So I, I think, given that Typhon is a is a denizen of Baldur's Gate, mm -hmm. it would seem likely that he would recognize the significance of those three deities, yeah? 
You're asking about yourself or about Typhon? I'm asking about Typhon. Well, let's let Typhon ask. What do I know as a denizen of Baldur's Gate? <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what I just told you. Um, <clears throat> you are a a mage. You know that, and that there are many gods in Faerun. You know that these are the gods that are the main sources of power for uh, the way the weave works on hmm. Faerun. Is there any relationship between those symbols and these? three tables here or, uh, or the window lo itself loosely uh it's you can see elements of alchemy elements of tinkering and elements of magic experiments on all three of them um okay. it seems that these were glyphs of warning that just happened to be designed to be in the shape of these uh religious symbols got it it was just it was just style <clears throat> uh what about can i can we investigate this window further now that we've set off all the traps um well, okay. Uh, you I can... like how suddenly he says we set off all the traps, but <laughs> I'm scared of doorknobs. Okay, you will, you will need to get closer. You, you will need to get closer to it to uh, make an investigation check. You'll have to climb up onto the table and actually get physically in contact with the with the window. Does does the window still seem weird, though? It does. There's something about the window that is bugging you. <clears throat> um. All right. So. Alchemy doesn't sound like a good thing to climb upon. Um, will you guide me, DM, to which seems like <laughs> kicking something wouldn't set off a chain reaction of magical explosions? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, as an alchemist, um, yeah, I will say that this is not... Th there's there's several places that look like, ooh, that shouldn't be something to step on. But um, there's a couple places that are just mostly empty bottles, and you feel like, okay, if I step around those, I should be okay. Like this one was just coffee kind of thing. Exactly. Like it was just <laughs> making coffee. Yeah. Right. right. So you carefully climb upon the table and move yourself to the window and make an investigation check, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Hey, yo. The window, the window appears to be normal. Um, it is not locked. Um, you could open it if you wish. Uh, you can't really the the, the glass uh, is too colored for you to really get a good view of the uh, what lies outside. But as you're doing this, you realize this is the first window you've seen in this tower. And thinking back to the picture of Razameth's tower, there should be windows all over it. Hmm. Um, I will communicate this to the group and then push it open all right i love how everybody's just hanging out <laughs> by the Not going in there. <laughs> uh, so so you've, uh, you've you've communicated uh, uh i wonder i wonder if that means that there is an, an outer layer to the floor where the windows are. Well, you open the window and you see uh, a roof. Um, the as as you recall, the uh, brick on the outside of the tower is blue, and there are uh, red roofs at each story. Um, you have a spectacular view of Baldur's Gate. Um, if you wish to step outside, I can describe it to you. Otherwise. Um, that is what you see. Hmm. Uh, so, it, what what was bothering me about this window? Have I been able to determine that? The thing that bothered you was the fact that this is the first window that you saw, and you realize now, based on what you saw from the outside, you should have been seeing many windows on each of the floors as you came up, and you did okay. not. You've only seen this one. Typhon, you okay? Everything's fine. We just... How is this the first window we've seen? Is this... Magic of this? Like a demi-plane? Are we... I don't understand. Well, perhaps you we you, check... You think with... I'll go ahead and say with this 25 investigation reflecting a, uh, a, a check that 
allows you to know more than a mere investigation check would. Um, you realize that if these glyphs of warding, if their effect on somebody who is to step on them is to throw yourself out the nearest window, there would need to be a window for them to throw themselves out of. Ah, I fun. I, I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. Um, kind of look back as if absorbed in sort of my pursuit of this and kind of nod and climb down and say, yes. Um, just trying to follow the, follow the pattern to all of this is all. Um, I know you. Perhaps the next, go ahead. Do. Perhaps the next room. I don't think we, I just don't think, I don't think we have all the information quite yet. Maybe, maybe one thing leads to the next. Maybe there's another clue. And also, what is this? (laughs) What is this circle? Uh, Make an arcana check. Okay. Mm-hmm. You've you kind of recognize some of these runes, but never in this particular pattern. Um, you've heard stories about all kinds of circles that uh, powerful mages use. Some of them use circles to teleport. Some of them use circles to confine or create. Um, but you have no way of knowing exactly what this is based on your own personal experience. Silas don't walk in that circle. It's a five foot square. I, no, I no, didn't I'm walk just, in it. I'm <laughs> assuming that nobody's walking in the circle. Is I was anybody, just saying that anyway. Anybody, no. <laughs> anybody, check, anybody checking anything else? Um, I mean, this is a lot of, this is like a lot of stuff I'd be interested in this room. Um, I imagine that there would be certain valuable alchemical components that could be taken, a recipe or two for a different, po- all that kind of stuff that I don't want to bog you down with, but I would like to um, check for. Well, we're sense. not going to get to the point where we finish this tonight based on where we are now. So if you want to make investigation checks and all that, if anybody else wants to check or anything like that, this would be the time i'm just going to see if there's any manuscripts any books anything like that that what we're here for show me where you're checking is anyone else um proficient in investigation yeah now i know that the rug's not going to eat me i'll go in and help with investigation (laughs) okay (laughs) um i could i give um well um basically give jacks like an idea of exactly what to look for even though this is i was um very like was up about not being condescending to him. I very condescendingly say, look for this, this X, Y, and Z is what you're looking for, for a magical recipe. Look for those things exactly. And tell me if you find something like All that. All right. So where is he looking? <laughs> I don't know. I definitely know. Um, well, I was going to have him help me and tell him how to help me. So let's okay. do that. Um, there looks like to be a book, some books here for some recipes and such. Let's do this. All right, let's see here. I'm going to stand in the doorway with like my hammer in my hand, just sort of patting it and being like, all right, come on, rug. Yeah, I'm just waiting for this all to go terribly wrong. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Same. exactly. So uh, you check the table on the northwest corner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was, this looked more bookish. We're, we're so checking all of them. We're, yeah. we're starting we're with checking the... all of them. Yeah. All right. South so, Southwest bookshelf. Make first. an investigation check with advantage, uh, Jax. I will look right. on the okay. Northwest one. Investigation with advantage, you say? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. 21. Excellent. Well, uh, with Typhon at your side and you poking around and moving things around, you don't see anything that is specifically what Typhon is looking for, but you do manage to pull out some things that are very interesting. Um, and Typhon, you realize that you have before you the components of a travel alchemical kit. Um, ah. This will automatically give you proficiency in poisoning as well, possessing this. 
Oh, um, oh you want so this? So Typhon doesn't it want that. Market. Typhon so, doesn't want anything to do with poison. Yeah, maybe we can sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a travel alchemical kit. You have, well, you still have to use the money to buy various components and things to do things, but it is something that you can carry with you as opposed to uh, having to have a home or a lab. Um, and possessing it also gives you proficiency in poisoner's kits, and it is a poisoner kit as well. Nice. <clears throat> I'm looking for any small trinkets and stuff. All right. As well as XYZ. Um, so you continue looking with advantage. Um, you move to the table. Roll an investigation check, please. Thirteen. Mm, there are many uh, sharp implements um, and a very obviously large blood stain, uh, but other than that, there doesn't seem to be anything of particular interest on this table. Uh, northeast, then. Northeast corner. Uh, several containers of alchemical ingredients. Make an investigation check. I want to help a shaman out, but he went boom. Um, 16. Um, there is uh, a cutting board, and while a lot of the ingredients in the jars and such seem to have dried out beyond use or spoiled, there are some ingredients on the table that seem to have been in the process of some sort of experiment, some sort of concoction, and they are perfectly fresh. Look like they've just been cut. Freshly cut? Oh. Well, this could be, be useful. Uh, be careful uh, with that old stuff. I'm sure no one's touched it in years. Oh no, Typhoon. it's definitely someone's touched it recently. It was making like... out al making an alchemical kit. Uh, check you with uh, intelligence. Okay, um, same it... modifier as my investigation as I okay. am proficient. So I'll roll that. He was about to put it in his pocket cool. when you like, mentioned it. Um, well, it was a it was an easy an easy thing to determine so it just needed a 10 um you can see the uh the process that was going on here and you think you can complete it but it will not be easy um you think that the goal of this particular experiment was maybe to create something that would cause something to be invisible it's almost finished um I start to roll up my sleeves and then think better of it and roll them back down, looking around the room quietly back and forth and then just look and how, how quickly could this be done? Um, it would take at least a couple of hours. Okay. Hmm. Unless you rolled really, really well. Do I keep it? Do I put it back? <laughs> um, perhaps. Are they part of? Is what he has part of the experiment? Well, all of the ingredients and such could be removed, but if they are disturbed, it might be difficult. Th this particular experiment is beyond your ability. You just realize that with the proper completion, that it might work if you get the amounts correct. Okay, Jax, it's um. You know, let's not touch it for right now. Um, might go boom. Might, yes, might go boom. Um, I guess let's take a look at these other tables. Um, he will walk around the magic circle. On this table, um, you see several things that look like maps. Various cartography supplies. Hmm. Is anybody proficient in cartographer's tools? Nope. This one looks like it's got pretty, pretty pictures on. I'm sorry, Silas, aren't you proficient in cartographer's tools? I am. Right. Did you hear me ask if anybody was proficient in cartography? No, I didn't. I didn't hear okay. you say that. I'm sorry. Right. 
So on this table are um, uh, various maps and cartography equipment. I heard that part. I just didn't hear and, for and a then I asked, Sorry. Right. And I asked if anybody was proficient in cartographer's tools. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, Jack says that and something perks up and you come over to look at it. Um, he begins pulling out things that look interesting, uh, particular, particularly shiny, things that move in an interesting way. Um, and there's perhaps an interesting map kit or some sort that you could do here. Make a uh, cartography tool check. Definitely not go to that part of the water. There's a I'm big monster sure. there. I'm not sure how to do that. How do I make a cartographer's tool check? So it's the way you should do it is you just roll your uh, you, you have proficiency in the tools so I tell you what skill set to use and then you add your proficiency bonus to it. But it seems problematic with the with roll twenty. So, do you have any skills that would allow you to do an intelligence check and add your proficiency bonus to it? Because that's what we've been doing with other things. It's just mm -hmm. basically something that requires intelligence that you are proficient in. No. All right. Well, then roll an intelligence check, and we will just assume that you add two to it. Oh, is that how it works? So with a dex plus six and thief tools proficiency, I would have been a plus eight. Okay, mm -hmm. that would have been different than my. So role. I rolled a twelve base roll, mm -hmm. and the plus two gives you fourteen, which is enough. You are able to assemble the pieces of an elder cartographer's glossography. This will allow you to have advantage whenever using a map to determine uh, correct paths and such. I look somewhat disgusted as I recognize what it is. And I just say out loud that this would help someone like myself with maps. Uh, ugh, I'll take it. <laughs> the, DM, the DM giveth that the DM can take away. <laughs> oh, I look over my treasure. <laughs> look over my shoulder to the door and go. Guess he doesn't like maps. Long story. On this table, again, you find various elements, but there is one thing that is strange. There is a silver statuette of a beautiful woman with long unfurled wings, sort of like the sort of trophies that you would get for soccer and baseball matches, except much, much more intricately designed. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm going to reach out for it. <laughs> Does anybody stop him? Well, I shout from across the room like, Jack Snow! <laughs> an evil laugh why don't you check first Jax there's been a lot of magical traps around here why don't we take a look together around it before oh we okay as take it as a pretty oh yeah as long as I get to keep it um, help me take a look here for some uh, traps will you okay I'll help him alright roll an investigation please with advantage is that me mm -hmm. rolling or you I think I had you I better. was going to roll it. Yeah, you've got oh. better investigation than me. Oh, well done. Uh, there doesn't appear to be trapped. See, nothing to worry about. Not this time. Take it away. Okay, <laughs> pick it up. Um, it's beautiful. It's sort of a celestial looking uh, bronze statue. Um, however, when you're looking at it and examining it, there is something engraved on the base. Oh, I read it. It is a name, Elila. I read it. Oh, it says Elila. Circle flashes brightly, and all of a sudden, appearing in a blue mist, is a beautiful woman. I didn't touch anything. <laughs> As you utter this name, she is. Gorgeous, with long 
gray feathered wings. She's wearing a sheer shrift. She has pale skin, long black hair, and horns protruding from her forehead and a tail that curls around her legs. And she looks at you all with hatred and then begins to sing. Does anybody speak Celestial? No. I do not. I do. Ah. Well then, Falkron, if you would be so kind as to read my last song. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. So, uh, as she sings, she says, Look down, my love. My love, look down. Behold the heavenward gaze, redeemed in whole a sinful soul. Come set the world ablaze. Come down, my love. My love, come down. Drink deeply from the well. Let brightening day pass on its way. Lie still, weep not for hell. Lie down, my love, my love, lie down. Thrum to the delight of flesh. Harm not the flame, thy hope reclaim. Fall into passion's crash. Fall down, my love, my love, fall down. Yield to lust's command. No path remains toward hallowed plains. For thy love be damned. So she sings the song. And then as it finishes, she sits cross-legged in the circle, glaring at you all. That is where we will pick up next time. All right. Nice. Uh, Thank you for everybody who watched. Uh, Hold on. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Sorry. Thank you for everyone who watched. Um, had a lot of fun, and uh, <clears throat> hope you did as well. And uh, next week we will continue again with the exploration of Ramazist's Tower. Mm. Take care, Excellent. all. Good night. Yeah, um, night. just to let everyone know that we have got another show coming soon, which will be on a Friday night. Um, Peter here, who's playing Typhon, is a DM. We've got a couple of others that are in uh, playing as well. Um, I know that we've lost Istra and we've lost Black Death, but they've gone on to Pastures New, and obviously, you know, they're welcome back anytime. They're still a part of our community, so if anyone is watching uh, that wants to come and play games, come and join our Discord. And um, yeah, we'll be back for this one next Sunday, and we'll have um, Tess with us as well. Yes. Hopefully, maybe Hell yeah. she's recovered. Hopefully, she's fully recovered. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, it's good to be back and see you next week. It'll be a party, yes. Bye, uh, everyone. Yeah, see you later, guys. Mm-hmm.